and hopper, basking in the sun. A dancing and a hopping, having lots of fun. I put the sand landed in that hopper's eye. And the little sand hopper said, My, oh my, I got one leg missing. I got one leg missing. I got one leg missing. I do a good around. Jackson made meet the Feebles in a derelict railway's good shed. For the winter of 89, Shed 12 became a Feebles factory. Reporter Kevin Isherwood talked to Peter Jackson about Feebles and filmmaking. One of my favourite quotes is from Alfred Hitchcock. Um, and he says that, uh, he says, I, I don't make films that are slices of life, I make slices of cake. And um, that, I mean, that's a, a marvellous quote, and it's exactly, you know, uh, the sort of thing that I, that I um, think as well. I mean, the films that I want to make, or have made, um, are definitely slices of cake. Meet Heidi, the hippo, star of the Feebles variety show. Cake is just one of her vices. She has her hands full, satisfying her fans, her lover, and her healthy appetite. <laughs> Will that be all for Heidi? Something to take away, maybe? I mean, I'm a, a, a quite a selfish filmmaker and that a, what, the movies that I'm making are um, exactly the type of films that I would want to go out and watch myself. So uh, I just think that um, the movie making is, is an extension of a sort of childhood fantasies because I was, as a kid, I was always um, playing with... Um, wooden bricks and creating castles and matchbox toys and, and, and um, creating little stories in my head and I just don't think I've ever grown out of that phase. The reason why I started making these little films was really because I was wanting to put my models onto film. I just used to love model making kit sets, making things out of cardboard and I just um, was intrigued by the idea of actually shooting these models and making little stories up. I never wanted to become a director. Um, that was never my ambition for a long time. It was I just wanted to be a special effects man in movies. It was not until later that I, I started to do little story movies. In 1987, Jackson made his first assault on the cinema-going public with bad taste. A sci-fi splatter comedy, it began as a 10-minute home movie shot on weekends. But after four years, it developed into a full-length cinema feature. Today, it's a cult movie. Jackson's outrageous visual tricks make a shocking mess on the big screen. The type of shocks that are in The Feebles are... are, are um, similar to the type of shots that are in bad taste and that you you are do, showing something pretty extreme that um is so ridiculous that that it can't help but make people laugh i mean that's a, that's exactly the type of um of, of humor that i like i mean i don't like making shocking films i don't like making violent violent films i don't like violence but um i like humor and that there is that type of humor that is savage and <laughs> Oh, what am I going to do now? It took me six months to train that lot. There is this um, incredibly magical part to it at the beginning where you're, you're basically writing it or, or creating it in your head um, with other people and you're coming up with the ideas and you're seeing it all in your mind as the perfect movie. And then it suddenly turns into a factory, which is this nasty bit in the middle, which you have to actually get nuts and bolts and hammers and nails and a lot of people and make it put the images onto film and it's never as good as you see in your mind it's always depressing and it's a lot of hard work and it goes on for months and months and um and then it slowly uh, becomes magical again it's used almost like claws its way back from being um this um thing that's come off a production line into becoming something that's magical as you're at, as you're editing the pictures together and you're adding sound effects and you're adding music and step by step and finally in the end you're back to um, you're back to a magical product. Puppet maker Cameron Chittick had the task of creating the feeble cast. Certainly, uh, 
creatively it's been pretty good you know like a hundred characters mm. um, I've had a lot of freedom and it certainly progressed my um, puppet making ability quite a bit um, being forced to make that many characters quickly you um, have to make some decisions pretty quickly um, but also um, the, the pressure um, in terms of having to get all the puppets made on time with very little money um, has been pretty tough going too. Pretty um, intense. Yeah, yeah, and and other things happens too, where whereby you know, you've just you've just completed the puppet, you know, you've sweated away for seven days to get this puppet made, and then Peter will come along and say, oh, oh, it's great, you know, it's really really good, but wouldn't it be nice if the eyes could move, you know? We've just made the puppet so it doesn't have moving eyes and it's got eyelids, but and, and it's back to the drawing board. Yeah, yeah. The whale was a puppet maker's nightmare to build. It's at least 20 feet long, and it takes no less than six people to drive it. It's the largest puppet in the film, but it had to be capable of having some very quick, violent movements, which is pretty difficult to get with such a large puppet. The feebles are made of cheap stuff, just plastic foam and glue. So puppet maker doubles as puppet surgeon. Heidi's hands have been through the wars quite a bit. She's had to eat chocolate cake. She's had to carry a very heavy machine gun. So the hands need to be replaced. A lot of the other puppets have their heads blown off, their arms blown away, shotgun wounds in the bodies and all this sort of thing. So those parts have to be replaced quite regularly it's quite a major part of my job is actually to maintain the puppets as well inside the railway shed the world of the feebles is constructed from scrap metal hardboard plastic and demolition timber and rebuilt daily for the three-month shoot as jackson films one scene in another part of the shed the crew recycle and repaint for the next Absolutely hate it. Oh my God. Paid only half the industry's hourly rate, they have to find small budget solutions to big budget problems. Like model maker Richard Taylor, their payoff is the unique experience. Richard, making a, a stretch model limo, Mori, sounds like a lot of fun, but it probably is quite difficult. Um, yeah, very tricky one. This, this one is probably one of the more difficult um, tasks that I've been set as far as a model maker goes. The Mori is famous because it is made up of a series of curves. There isn't actually a straight line in a Morris Minor. So as you can imagine, when you tackle this in a model making form, it, it becomes quite a major task. It's made up of complex, um, convex curves that not only follow the lines of the panel one way, but also um, follow the bodywork the opposite way. Well, this is the original, or this is the one that's in the film, the stretch limo, isn't it? Why can't you use that instead of going to all this trouble? Well, the reason that uh, in film miniatures are used is either because of a monetary problem or you want to create a, an environment that you can't create.